In today's video, we're going to be learning how you can get any text or logo, basically any SVG that you have, and get them to reveal themselves in this particular neon effect. Let's start right off. In the default scene, let's delete our cube. We're going to do this tutorial with a text object. You could take any other curve anyway. Let's rotate it on the x-axis and then go down to the text properties over here. In the fill mode, change it to none. And of course, because this is a text, you can always tab and change it to whatever text you want. And you can also change the font by going to the font over here and opening up the desired font. It's generally present in the C folder windows font. So once you have the font selected, we're going to go to object and we're going to convert it into a curve. Object, convert to a curve. Now, because this is a curve, you can actually select it and give it whatever character you want. So you could actually change it up just to make it more like a text that a more personalized version of the text. However, we won't be doing that for this particular tutorial. So now that you have a single curve object, we want each letter to be its own individual object. So we're going to hit tab to go into edit mode and then hit L to select everything from one single letter, which is basically anything that's linked will get selected and then hit P and enter to separate by selection. Then hover over the next letter, tap L to select everything. Make sure that you're on top of one of the nodes. And when you hit L, then again, P separate, go to the next one, L, P separate, L, P separate. So now you have four separate text objects and you no longer require the original text object. So we can delete that. So now this is text one, two, three, four. Of course, you can change the names over here, but let's not go into that. Next, Shift A, add in a mesh cube, scale it by tapping S and then scale it to 0 0.1 and then just scale it on the Z by something like 100. After that, hit tab to go into edit mode and then hit Control R to increase loop cuts and just type in 1000 with your cursor on this. So now you have 1000 loop cuts. Now we can go ahead to the modifiers and add in a modifier. This is going to be a curve modifier and we select our first object curve. We change the deform axis from X to Y and immediately you see how it wraps around the text. Now we can always grab it on the Z axis to actually move it around. And what we're going to be doing is just scaling it on the Z axis till it completely matches up. But remember that right Right now it's going to scale from the top right corner so maybe you want to scale from a different region so you could always just grab it on the z-axis to just move it to whatever you want the starting position to be and then just scale it up on the z-axis until it completely covers the entire text now you hit shift d to duplicate it but then in the modifier remove text one and add in the next text then again scale it on the z until it matches up and then again shift d to duplicate hit enter remove text two and then hit the X and then shift D, enter, remove text 3 and hit the T. So now if we just scale it down on the Z axis, you see it's starting from the same region. We don't want it to start from the same region. So what we're going to do is we're going to now grab it on the Z axis and move this one to maybe start from on top. So let's just move it and then scale it up on the Z axis. Now let's see where the E is starting. Scale it on the Z. It's starting from an okay position. I do not mind it, but I will just grab it on the Z axis by a little bit like that. Scale on the Z. I don't mind the X either. So now the actual animation, we'll get into that right now. Let's make the animation five seconds long. So 150 at 30 frames per second. So let's go to the output properties and make it the frame rate 30 frames per second. And then let's assume that at frame 120, which is one second before the end, everything will reach their final position. So let's take all of them, hit I and make sure that we insert a keyframe for the scale. Now let's go to frame number one or and then just scale on the Z axis and hit zero for all of them. Enter I scale. So now when we actually play the animation, you can see how it grows about the text. Now it's Bezier so that it starts slow, speeds up and then slows down at the end. I don't mind that. We're going to keep it at Bezier itself. Now I made one mistake which is when I was scaling it down, I scaled them down with their median point and not individual origins. Make sure that you scale it with individual origins so that the position that you kept it at remain. Otherwise, as you saw, I had positioned all of them to how I liked it, but now they're all starting from different regions and we don't want that. So now I have to reposition them. Just grab it on the Z axis and there you go. Now, one more thing, the last thing that you could do is you can actually select all of them and you can just shift D to duplicate and then grab it on the Y axis. And now you see if you actually move it out, it becomes like a nice bubble version of themselves. And of course, they might be a little too thick. So what you could do is you can just scale them on everything but the Z axis and just scale them down to make them thinner. 
and then of course grab it on the y-axis to move it a bit closer and there you go you get like this nice outline of the text if you don't want it to be an outline you can actually grab it on the y-axis itself and just move it till it goes inside so that's personal preference of what you like but that's what it currently looks like so now let's go to the rendered viewport shading and just place the camera accordingly so let's hit zero to go to our camera select our camera alt g alt r r x 90 g y just grab it back on the y-axis then grab it on the z-axis just to centralize the text gx another thing that you could do when you have it still as a text object so suppose we do shift a and just add in another text object assuming that this was your original text object in the text properties you could actually make sure that you change the alignment to center and center that way the text remains perfectly in the center and when we actually alt g our camera and just gy the text will always remain perfectly in the center and you don't have to worry about positioning your camera. Since we did not do that, we will position our camera manually. So once you have your camera positioned however you want it to be, we can go ahead and start the actual shading. The first thing that we're going to do is remove the light. So let's select our light source over here, hit X and delete, and then give this its own material. We're going to call this outer materials. It's going to be a very simple emission, very high, to whatever color you want it to be with a strength of something high like 10. Let's go into our output properties, switch on bloom, switch on screen space reflections, and make sure that we clamp our bloom at four with an intensity of 0 0.02. Once you have that, go ahead and select the other three outer boxes. Select our first one, hit Control L, link materials. Now let's go to the inside one, give it a new material, We'll call this insights. And now again, it's completely up to you what you want to do with it. I want to give it a, a slightly colored, more white material, emission strength 10. And now select all of the inside letters, select our final one and hit control L link materials. Now let's go to the world and just change our world background to black. Now, remember that our inside materials, we duplicated them. So they have the same scaling already applied to them so this is how it now looks and this works with any svg apart from this of course you can add in a lot of texture to this we will get to that in a second but before that at the back i want there to be some more information so let's add in a mesh plane rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees grab it on the y-axis just so that it moves behind the text then position it accordingly just grab it on the x grab it on the z and then just scale it up so that it goes beyond our camera view then let's give it a new material now let's actually open a new shader editor window so create a new window window go to shader editor hit n to remove the side panel and now shift a search for a voronoi texture search for a color ramp place the color into the color ramp let's bring this in bring this in place the color into the roughness and then just scale it up a bit once you have that done as well change it from 3d to 4d and this W, just give it something like hash frame by 2000 so that it just changes over time a bit. So in my opinion, that adds quite a bit to the scene. And now in order to give it some sort of blinking animation or whatever, in our outer material and things like that, we can actually give it some sort of a noise texture, put it into a math node and a color ramp, place the color in there and the color into this math node change it to multiply multiply it by a large number like 10 place that into the emission strength and then just go ahead and play around with the actual color ramp and increase the scale yeah bring in the color ramp in just like that reduce the scale or increase it based on what you prefer so i think a scale of five is pretty fine and it just gives a nice outline-ish feel of course you have to increase this value quite a bit so let's increase it to 300 and there you go so now you have some sort of a noise texture as well playing in you can also have these actually start off a bit later so maybe you can select all of the materials all of the objects essentially both the insides and the outsides and just g by 15 units so that it actually starts off completely dark for like half a second once you are happy with your material you can go ahead go to the output properties make sure you have the output folder selected correctly change it to ffmpeg video encoding change it to mpeg4 
and output quality to perceptually lossless and once you're done hit render animation hopefully you learned something in this video i hope it wasn't too long and there's going to be a lot more coming up so stay tuned and until next time stay creative